All right, so we are ready to answer the previous question asking when a function has both absolute maximum and minimum. The condition is, uh, well, continuity together with closed interval. So if your function is continuous on closed interval, then you can always say your function has both absolute maximum and minimum. Ah, typo. Absolute maximum and absolute minimum. So here is a quick example of graph which is continuous on an interval, closed interval from A to B. So Looking at this graph, you can tell which one is your absolute maximum and minimum. So this value is absolute maximum, and this value is absolute minimum. Uh, let's say this is C and D. So if your graph looks like this, absolute maximum is f of C, and f of absolute minimum is f of Okay, and another definition. Uh, to describe the behavior, behavior of the function, we have some remarkable points. In addition to C and D, where the function attains maximum and minimum, we have some points where your function has some interesting behavior. So for those two points, your function has horizontal tangent line or derivative is zero. So if your function has horizontal tangent line or zero derivative, or in, on those points, your function is not differentiable, then we say those points are critical numbers. F prime x does not exist at x equals c. So the definition is a number c is called a critical number if your function has horizontal tangent line or your function is not differentiable. So in this example, those two, say uh, R and S, those two numbers are critical numbers. In, in addition to those two, we have two more numbers, C and D, where your function is not differentiable. So all four guys are critical numbers. In the previous example, your function has critical number x equals 0. Because the first function was piecewise function, where your function is not differentiable at x equals 0. So by definition, the example f of x in the previous slide has critical number x equals 0. All right, one more example. Uh, we want to find critical numbers for this given function. Well, to find a critical number, you want to check where your function horizontal tangent line or your function is not differentiable. So basically, first you want to check where you have zero derivative. So you want to take derivative first. Now that the function is a product, you can use product rule, which says derivative is sum of two terms. For the first term, you take derivative of the first guy, so 3 over 5 x to the new power is 1 less than previous, 3 fifths minus 1, negative 2 over 5, and then copy of second guy, 
plus copy of first, and then derivative of second, which is negative 1. So to figure out when this becomes 0, so you want to solve the equation this equals 0. Well, to solve this, we need to rewrite this a little bit. Uh, basically, you want to fact, kind of factor. You can use the term with smaller power. So basically, you can use this guy. Uh, x to the negative 2 fifth. So then what's left is 3 fifth for minus x plus. Well, when you take this out, what's left is x to the 1 times negative 1. Well, when you multiply those two, you will get back to this term. So you want to solve this, or you can rewrite this 1 over something times. Well, you can take this 1 fifth out. What's left is 4 minus x plus uh, negative 5 times x. So we are ready to solve this equation. Well, this cannot be 0. In order for this to be 0, we have to have this equals 0. Or you simply solve this linear equation. So solving this linear equation, we have negative 3 plus negative 5, or negative 8x equals 12. So 12 over 8, or 3 over 2. And of course, x equals 0 makes this denominator 0, so f prime doesn't exist. So x equals 0 is another critical number. OK, and one more quick remark. If your function has local minimum and local maximum, then automatically your function has critical number. Then c is a critical number. <laughs>